this is a new type of computer. This new processor took us nearly a decade to do. And we call it Grace Hopper. The amount of performance is, is fairly insane, but let me, let me just show it to you this way. If you look at the gray bar, that's one CPU. The light green bar on the right-hand side, that's one Grace Hopper. The first application of Grace Hopper is our climate software. Grace Hopper can perform these type of applications substantially faster with a much, much better energy efficiency. Uh, for example, the large language model of Llama can be performed at 200 times better energy efficiency. This is not your normal computer. It requires the software to be rewritten for this type of computer from the ground up. But if you're able to do so, the amount of energy efficiency you can get is really spectacular. Richard Feynman once said that uh, what I can't create, I don't understand. And that's the reason why climate modeling is so important. If you don't understand it, how can you possibly understand the human impact to Earth's climate? And yet, it is one insanely complicated problem. The physics is complicated. We understand very well that at 100 kilometers, at 25 kilometers, we might be able to predict that the Earth is warming, that greenhouse gases contributes to this warming, and that human activity is the cause. Understanding the mean temperature of Earth mobilized a great many areas of mitigation. It is the reason why so many different industries are moving towards sustainable energy. It is the reason why so many climate tech companies have been founded for pre and post carbon capture. Mitigation is no longer enough. Adaptation is necessary. Adaptation is at human scales. In order for us to help society adapt, when, how severe, where, those kind of questions require a resolution of fidelity that we simply cannot achieve at 25 kilometers. EVE, as you know, stands for Earth Virtualization, another way of saying digital twin. Earth 2 is a digital twin of Earth climate. There's a reason why we worked on it. And the reason for that was because of some groundbreaking technologies that we were seeing. But in order to make EVE happen, it requires several miracles. There are three miracles that has to happen. The first one is how can we take a traditional method of simulation, increase its resolution to a couple of kilometers or a kilometer square, 30,000 simulated years per year would take nearly a billion watts, 750 million watts. Basically, every single data center on the planet would have to join forces to even have a chance at doing something like that. The second thing is, how would you even interact with that data? The pre-computing that is done to even retrieve the simulation data to be able to interact with it would be enormous amounts of data. And the third thing, of course, is how would you visualize all of this data? Because it takes pretty powerful workstations and supercomputers to be able to visualize the information today. How would we put that in the hands of policymakers, businesses, companies, researchers, so that they could understand the impact of that storm, maybe to their coastal regions, maybe to their farms, maybe to their infrastructure that they're building? How would they even explore that unless they have these powerful workstations and powerful visualization systems? And so these three miracles have to be addressed. The first problem that we have is in order to simulate 30,000 days per day or 30,000 years per year, we would need 750 megawatts. We can now do it 20 times better than that. Now, 20 times better than that isn't quite 30 megawatts, but it is very, very close. There are two dynamics that are happening in the computer industry as we speak. The computer industry has been using a computing model that is largely unchanged since the IBM System 360 was invented 60 years ago. General purpose computing has the benefit of Moore's law for several decades. And as a result, computing has improved in performance every five years by a factor of 10, every 10 years by a factor of 100, until about the last couple, two, three years. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, data center compute, data center power has now reached about 2%. And the reason for that is because CPU scaling has ended, and yet demand continued to rise. And so where NVIDIA comes in, we can deliver a quantum leap in computational capability while reducing the amount of energy used. The second 
area of contribution is physics ML. Using machine learning, using AI to learn the properties of physics, we know how to use AI to learn the properties of language, learn properties of speech, but what if we also use it to learn physics? Modulus allows us to learn physics. Along with that, we have to invent a new type of AI model to forecast climate. And the third is a digital twin system we call Omniverse. Accelerated computing, this is a new type of computer. This new processor took us nearly a decade to do, and we call it Grace Hopper. It's the world's first tightly coupled CPU and GPU and makes it possible for us to accelerate just about any software. This is what it looks like in the system. If you wanted to create a supercomputer out of this, you take one Grace Hopper, you connect these Grace Hoppers using a special link that it connects the whole bunch of them into one giant computer. All of its memories are connected. It's one virtual GPU. 256 GPUs, 150 miles of optical cable, 40,000 pounds. And to the software, it is one chip. You program it like one giant GPU. We're building it now. This is very, very early code. I'm sure it's going to get a lot better. But on the left-hand side, it's 2,140 CPUs. It can simulate 40 days per day. On the right is 1,536 Grace Hopper, the super chip on the left. And we can simulate 722 days per day using the same amount of power. In both cases, it's one megawatt. So the first miracle is we should be able to do that within about 30, 40 megawatts. The second big breakthrough is using artificial intelligence to learn the properties of physics. And we created a framework that is designed to learn the structure of physics and to be able to predict the climate. And we invented a model called ForecastNet, climate researchers at NVIDIA, partnering with researchers at Caltech, so that it could learn continuous functions and learn relationships from very large spans of time and space. And the results are very physical, and it reflects the skills of a good weather predictor and a good climate predictor. And try to reforecast historical extremes. This is Hurricane Harvey. And you can see that it has learned the physical properties of climate and of physics. In this particular case, the Coriolis effect. It turns to the right in the northern hemisphere and it turns to the left in the southern hemisphere. It also seems to predict rather well the internal temperatures of the hurricane and the wind speed. So what can you do with the models? You could checkpoint it. And in this particular case, we checkpoint it monthly. And then we tested it against the 2018 Berlin climate in this particular case. As you could see, it generated some trajectories that are quite believable. The blue is ground truth. It's able to do a fairly good job generating statistical climate. This is Buenos Aires, and as you can see, it has reasonably good skills in predicting climate, and this is in Tokyo. It takes the pressure off of the numerical simulation by a factor of two, and what used to be 30 megawatts could be 15 megawatts. Here, we ask ourselves, what is the incredible capability that AI can perform that, frankly, simulation approaches simply cannot afford to do? And of course, one of its abilities is large ensembles and to be able to make predictions of a large number of different statistics that otherwise wouldn't have been predicted. And so let's play this video. It's really interesting. Extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity. In 2018, the temperature in Algeria reached 51.3 Celsius, the hottest ever recorded in Africa and beyond what existing models predicted. The actual recorded temperature is shown here in orange. As you can see, the actual temperatures exceeded the 99th percentile shown by the dashed line. The yellow line represents ForecastNet's forecast for the daily maximum temperature. This is a 50-member ensemble from ForecastNet. That's the typical size of a numerical weather prediction ensemble, and it takes an hour for a large supercomputer to generate. None of the gray lines cross the 99th percentile, because extreme events are rare, large ensembles are needed to predict them with any kind of accuracy. With a small ensemble, outcomes are simply missed. By running ForecastNet on NVIDIA GPUs, however, we were able to generate a thousand ensemble members in one-tenth the amount of time it previously took to do one, and with significantly lower energy consumption. Twelve members of that ensemble exceeded the 99th percentile and correctly predicted the heat wave. 
Here are the spatial maps of the heat waves predicted by those 12 ensemble members. Using AI, we were able to predict this high impact event a full three weeks in advance. Tapping into GPU acceleration to dramatically increase ensemble size can give us deeper visibility into extreme weather around the world and valuable time to prepare. And so the second miracle is to be able to interact at very high resolution regional scales and a level of computation that's just simply unimaginable. Five kilometer resolution would take 4,000 of the H100s. It would take about three days to train this model. And every time you want to inference it, you can generate a thousand ensembles at five kilometer resolution, probably better than that, within about an hour. That is simply unachievable using numerical simulations. And you simply wouldn't put that capability in the hands of tens of thousands of people. And so AI gives you a three orders of magnitude speed up and capability. Third has to do with digital twins. We're building three types of brand new supercomputers. The one in the back is for training the AI models. The one in the middle is for simulating physical properties. The one that's in front is your omniverse cloud computer. These three new types of supercomputers are just now coming online. And on top of it, we're going to overlay our Earth 2 cloud services that I showed you earlier, and hopefully be able to contribute to EVE. And so this is what we imagine EVE to be someday. Accurately visualizing current weather conditions in high resolution and at a global scale is incredibly helpful to climate scientists. Using NVIDIA Omniverse Cloud, we can look at an icon simulation of any part of the world at a resolution of 1.25 kilometer. Here, you can see the detail in the clouds over Taiwan or thunderstorms over Africa that form as the sun rises and its light strikes the clouds in that area. Typical simulations today are done at 25 kilometer resolution and simply can't show these details. Observing the climate in high resolution at a global scale is a powerful tool, but it's also important to be able to show the impacts to specific regions or even to specific areas of a city. Here's a simulation of Ernst Reuter Platz in Berlin where we can see how the size and location of buildings impact airflows based on data from Palm and volumetric data from ICOP. This simulation power gives architects and city planners insights into how they can design and build smarter, more sustainable cities while letting climate scientists gain a deeper understanding of our changing world. Everything interactive. You should be able to pick the storm that you would like to study, pick the region that you're at, and interact with it just as you were looking at just now. And you'll be looking at the future. You'll be looking into the future as if you're enjoying today's weather. And so with that, I thought to this morning, I wrote you guys a mission statement for Eve. It kind of goes like this. Earth, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Eve. It's five-year mission to push the limits of computing in service of climate modeling to seek out new methods and new technologies to study global to local state of climate, to inform today the impact of mitigation and adaptation on Earth's tomorrow, to boldly go where no one has gone before.